the demand is, is going to be strong for quite some time. Between all of us, we'll be able to make this happen. Hello and welcome to this edition of the State of Soy. I'm Aaron Putsey. We're talking renewables, we're talking biofuels. I'm visiting with Kevin Lukey. Kevin serves as president of Chevron REG based out of Ames, Iowa. And Kevin, give us kind of the state of the renewable fuels industry from your vantage point. Yeah, thanks, uh, Aaron. Good to see you again. I think uh, I'm optimistic, but there's also some headwinds, right? If you look at sort of the state of optimism that I have, you look at the renewable diesel, there's lots of demand for renewable diesel and facilities are being built. Sustainable aviation fuel is another part of the renewable fuels uh, aspects that's coming. It's a bit behind renewable diesel and it's got a bit of headwinds, if you, if you will, for it to really make uh, all of that happen. There's some questions about how do you get there, soybeans to jet fuel, corn or ethanol to jet fuel, and then the pricing of it to be able to make it economic for producers like us to make sustainable aviation fuel. You always make time to uh, come before the farmers. You're a farmer yourself in, in farming in, in Western Iowa to this day, even in yep. your current role. How will you summarize to them the importance of moving forward together on addressing some of these critical issues facing this industry that we know is so vital to the soybean farmer. Yeah, so I think if you look at how it all comes together, right, it starts with uh, supportive policy, right? That's where the Farmers Soybean Association really have a loud voice. And then there's farming practices that are gonna have to change and sort of be modified. Uh, on our farm, for example, we use no-till, and that's really important to, to really lower sort of the intensity of our farming operations, if you will. And then there's the aspects of folks like ourselves and the energy uh, side of the equation to be able to pull sort of the soybean oil, that's uh, what we're really after, to be able to make then the fuel that's needed. Now it's gonna take all of us. It's gonna take policymakers, farmers, seed companies, energy companies for us to really be able to pull all this together because the challenge that we have, Aaron, is very complex and it's gonna be hard uh, to be able to do it by ourselves, but I think between all of us, we'll be able to make this happen. For the farmer viewing this, the three-legged stool explain it. I know you could spend three hours yeah. talking about this, right. but could you just very quickly summarize that three-legged stool? Yeah, so biodiesel is where it all started. Uh, started with soybean oil. That business is transformed. It's not just soybean oil. It's used cooking oil, animal fats, greases, if you will. Don't see a lot of growth in that business going forward, but don't see it really shrinking uh, that much as well. Renewable diesel over the last three or four years have seen just an explosion of growth, largely driven by California, but other states now are implementing fuel standards that actually incentivize uh, renewable uh, diesel. And so that market will continue to grow. It's a drop in fuel uh, for the diesel engine. And so lots of uh, optimism there. And then the last one is sustainable aviation. It's just really started in an infancy and you gotta figure out how do we be able to make it economically and then will the airlines and customers really afford to be able to pay for what it's gonna cost. So those are the three areas, using biofeedstocks or soybean oil and sort of the, the demand is, is gonna be strong for quite some time. On the biofuels issue, what we do know is that issue impacts all farmers and their profitability moving forward, not just into 2024, but beyond. Reporting for this edition of the State of Soy, I'm Aaron Putsy. My name is Charlie Brunker, and my wife and I and our kids run Precision Ag and try to be on the cutting edge every time we can. We turned on FMH, Precision Ag, Crop Insurance. We harnessed what we're already doing, and we'll never look back. Grandpa used to call a field, you know, 100 acres, and now we're planting 90 of the 100 acres. Well, we're only paying for the 90 that we plant, and those details actually increased our APHs anywhere from 5 to 12% in the first year.